Hey guys, Automated Garage back today with a 2002 Ford Excursion here with the 7.3 in it. Um, came in, we replaced his uh, AC compressor, dryer, and orifice tube. Uh, I think it was last summer. Um, his complaint initially was it's not cooling good. Um, the clutch on the compressor was wore out, so we replaced all that. Got it charged up. The front air is blowing absolutely ice cold air. On the back here, it will somewhat cool. Not cool great on the rear AC. We don't have an actuator door problem or a mode door problem or nothing like that for the rear controls back here. But uh, what we did notice is when you come back here to the back of the truck, let me turn you around. When the air was running, you would hear a lot of, it's almost a hissing sound like a like you're taking your garden hose valve and just cracking it open a little bit like something had a restriction back here. Well, on the back of these excursions back here, you have what's called a thermostatic valve right there. That, get my light set up. This gold is a thermostatic valve. Here's the new one here, it's Motorcraft. And there's your part number, which this is not super common, but these do go out in the back or can go out rather. But you can see here, it's a valve there. You can see it's got an orifice that's cracked open right there on the bottom. It's wide open on the top right here right now. And what this basically does is kind of restrict and control the flow of the Freon back here to the rear evaporator on here. So what we're doing is replacing that today. There's no mounts for it holding it. All it does is have the hoses going to it and it just kind of sits there with the, the hoses or what holds it up. So I'm gonna show y'all how to break this loose, tighten it back up, and then we're gonna charge this AC back up and we'll have some ice cold AC in the back of this excursion here. So we've already discharged the system and reclaimed our Freon in the front. So what you wanna do when you break this loose is you don't wanna just put your wrench on here and start twisting and start twisting the lines around while you're trying to break these loose. They're not super tight, but they can be a little snug and you don't wanna start manipulating your lines. So you wanna find something like this. This is just a punch that I have that fits right inside of this hole. It just goes all the way through this block here. Here's the one that we haven't put on yet, but it goes all the way through. And this just keeps you, if you'll take one hand and push in the opposite direction of what you're breaking the lines loose, it keeps you from twisting this all around while you're breaking the lines loose. You wanna use your fitting wrenches here. Um, don't use a regular wrench because you could end up rounding some of these off. You don't wanna do that. So get you a good, nice tight fitting, fitting wrench and break these loose. All right, so we've got our wrench on this bigger fitting on the left here. We got our punch in here. We're coming up to break it loose. So I'm gonna put my hand on this and kind of get a little bit of force down so I don't try to twist the block around. And break that loose. You can get all your fittings loose like that so you're not twisting anything around. All right, so we've got our lines loose and you are gonna have to take these two lines towards the back of the truck here and tweak them back just a little bit because you can see these lines fit down in the block a good little bit with O-rings on them down in there. So you gotta be careful. Don't bend the lines too much, but you just gotta tweak them enough to get the valve loose here. And there's our old valve there. Which I don't really know what goes wrong with these, just being completely honest. I've only done one other one of these in the past, but we are at the point where it can't be anything else with the system other than this, because the front is just blowing fantastic and the back is not unless the evaporator itself is clogged up. But anyways, we're showing how to replace this valve. All right, we replaced all of our O-rings on our lines there. That does not come with the valve. So make sure you replace them with the correct size green uh, O-rings for refrigerant. Um, we lubricated all of our O-rings and lines right there with some PAG oil, <coughs> just so you don't mess any O-rings up. So now I'm gonna work this back in there real carefully and uh, get the line started and make sure that I don't cross thread anything getting it started in this brass block here. All right, so here's the technique that I use to get the block in here, is you can pull these lines out towards you relatively easy without getting rough with anything. 
and get both of those started snug. And then you're gonna take both these lines, because these lines are pretty solid where they go into the box here. So you're not gonna move these. And then you can take both of these lines, kind of push them back a little bit and get both of those lines going into your ports here. And then just make sure, like I say, that you don't cross or anything and they start by hand really easy and then snug them up. And these are just barely snugged up right now so that I can still twist the block a little bit to be able to maybe line these up easier and get them started. All right, we got all of our lines tightened up. Use the same technique, stick something through the block so you're not trying to twist these lines around and hold the force opposite of what you're twisting with your wrench. Uh, I did not mention earlier, the smallest one is a 5 8 and then the others are 3 quarter and 7 8 and That's what takes care of your lines there. So now we're gonna go hook the gauges back up, pull a vacuum on the system, let it sit for a good 30 or 45 minutes, make sure we don't have no drop in vacuum to have a leak anywhere and charge the system back up. All right, so we've charged the system up and this is what our rear AC is blowing up about 42 degrees. Granted, it's only about 60 degrees today, so it's not real hot, but we had no cold air before in the back because of that thermostatic valve. So now we've got it straightened out and fixed. Just got to put the cover on, go drive it down the road, make sure everything's fine. And then uh, should be good here. All right guys, so it's been about a week since we did that excursion and I forgot all about shooting an ending for it or even having the video to put up here for y'all. But um, we just finished another excursion, made me think of that. But anyways, AC's blowing cold. Uh, we did some other work on the truck while he was here. He was really happy with how it drove. Um, we addressed some steering problems he was having. Um, I believe that was it. But anyways, that's the thermostatic valve. A lot of people don't know it's there. Um, I can't really explain to you, like I said in the video, on what goes bad inside of it. But when you rule the problem down all the way to you got cold AC in the front, um, everything else is working. You got the correct charge of Freon in the system, um, but you're not blowing any cold air in the back. Um, first check your blend door, of course, make sure you're not just trying to blow, uh, hot air, of course, but once you verify that, that's the only other thing left back there, unless your evaporator itself is stopped up, but that's how you replace the thermostatic valve. Part number was in the video for you. Um, I'm surprised you can still get them from Ford, honestly, but you can. So, uh, it's Automatic Garage signing out. We appreciate y'all watching. Go check out the other content on the channel here. Follow us at Facebook. And Instagram and TikTok now. We're on TikTok. Uh, Lee got me to do that. He's doing a lot of the TikTok stuff, putting a lot of our own trucks and some of the unique low mile trucks that roll through here on TikTok. Also, we got merch on the website. Um, if the channel has helped you out, save some money on fixing your truck yourself, or you just want to help support content here on the channel, go consider visiting our Patreon, becoming a member of that. Um, we do some other videos on there on, on stuff that we can't typically put on YouTube. Um, and sometimes us just goof around working on our own trucks, but that's what's on Patreon. We appreciate y'all. Thanks for all the following that y'all are, are, are giving us here. Um, everything is growing super fast and causing some growing pains, just trying to figure out how to keep up with the work here. Um, I really don't want to hire somebody full-time that I don't know, just because I'm worried about things not being done the way I want them done. But uh, we're getting pretty backed up. So if y'all have called, if you've emailed, whatever, and I haven't responded or haven't called you back yet. It's just because I'm trying to keep up with everything the best I can um, around here and getting the work done the right way. Um, but anyways, I appreciate y'all a whole lot. It's Automatic Garage signing out. We'll holler at you later.